Hi, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we're talking about Dr. Jamie Wallace, the first trans MP here in the UK. And this is part two. We'll be looking at his business dealings. <laughs> So the first part of the uh, business dealings of the Wallace family, because it includes um, Jamie Wallace's father, Dr. Daryl Wallace, again, another PhD from the same Space Bugs guy. Um, one of the major strands of their business empire is in the area of data recovery. So uh, I was very interested to find out a little bit more about this. So I followed various little breadcrumb trails and um, one of the things that I thought was just hilarious was the way that they have replicated the same websites and made them, you know, available to people in different countries. So there's people internationally that are clients of these uh, companies. And it's hilarious because um, I'm putting them in a, a, a shared screen at the moment so that you can see because it is quite funny that um, the same little uh, web design is just repeated in each different country. So there's like five, six, seven, eight different um, countries that are covered by these same websites. Uh, they all say the same thing in different languages. We can recover your data for a low cost and we have a great success rate. And look at our lovely uh, technicians and um, I've circled in red on every single one where uh, Dr. Jamie Wallace MP is circled as one of the technicians that has time to take a look at your broken technology and see if they can work out a way to fix it. She's just, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I guess, you know, this is partly marketing that, you know, they have a picture of technicians and they're not actually technicians. Several of them are actually um, employees of the company that I recognise from doing some digging around various areas of the company. So it's probably not dishonest in that they are employees in, in one vein or another, but it is dishonest that they are the people who are actually going to be looking at your hard drive. So I don't know, maybe maybe that's just me. So they have the same website and it's repeated in all these different countries. Going back to the um, going back to the websites that repeat and repeat and repeat. One of the funniest things is that they claim to have all these offices around the world. So the one that is um, appealing to the American market, uh, which is called Fields Data Recovery. And they claim to have offices in St. Louis, in Houston and in New York. Um, and they have drop off places in um, um buildings in those in those places now the one in the uk claims to have offices in cardiff leeds birmingham london etc and we know from the complaints that have come out from people who've driven their technology their precious family photos that they think might have been lost and they're desperate to get them back and they've driven them to these offices and and asked to speak to someone from the company. There's nobody there. There's just a receptionist that collects anything that's dropped off and then sticks it in the post to the actual office, which is in, in Bridge End. <laughs> so all of it is just, it's all made to look like something it's not. It's made to look like a thing that's in physical locations around the world and it's not. So I don't think that's very honest. So anyway, so they also have these other companies which are set up to look like they are competitor companies so that when you go online and you're looking for you know data recovery from my computer or whatever you'll you might see these fields companies and think oh you know i've heard about them they're they're a bit dodgy i'll use these other companies i'll use rapid data recovery instead well guess what it's the same people it's the same people and they've used a very different uh website design to create the page that you look at but it's it's an identical business model um the same for well all sorts of them i'm going to put them in the thing so that you can see them as we go now what is important about this well one of the things that i can see 
about how this works. It gives me a little bit of insight into their their business model as a larger group. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. One of the things that is very evident about all of these companies is that they all seem to have really high scores on Trustpilot and all of them have a big section of the website devoted to testimonials from customers from Trustpilot. And um, they all have, you know, hundreds of reviews. Um, it's very interesting because when you look at the Trustpilot pages for these different companies, you'll see, see two different types of reviews. You'll see really positive reviews and you'll see really negative reviews. What you won't see is reviews that say they were OK. It was more money than I wanted to spend, but who cares? I got my photos back at the end of the day or um, they were two days later than they said they would be on redelivering my stuff. But, you know, we got it all back and they did the job. So, yeah, three stars. What you see is either they were fantastic, best people ever. Um, you know, they they went above and beyond five stars or um, they they didn't look after my data securely. Um, they charged me hundreds of pounds more than they said they would. And then they returned my um, hard drive in a jiffy bag without any special packaging and it was damaged and now I can't get it recovered from any other company, one star. Like, it's odd, isn't it? Because, you know, why would you have such positive reviews and such negative reviews and nothing in the middle? Well, I have a theory about that. So all these digital companies offering data recovery services and other services, uh, operated by the family, Wallace, have been subject to hundreds of trading standards complaints, as reported in BuzzFeed on the 9th of January 2020, so shortly after Alex, um, shortly after Jamie Wallace was elected in December 2019. Um, freedom of information requests confirm that there are absolutely hundreds and hundreds, we're thinking between six and eight hundred, trading standards complaints about various of the companies ranging from, you know, they didn't do what they said they were going to do to they broke my stuff to they charged me and they didn't actually do any work. Um, there are all sorts of ins and outs. I recommend uh, having a good read of the BuzzFeed article. Um, it predates all this uh, very recent kerfuffle. So it's a a fairly um a fairly neutral uh, report of the of the efforts taken by Wallace to suppress uh, the reporting of these incredible numbers of trading standards complaints when you think about the numbers of countries that these websites are operating in and you think about the proportion of people that actually follow through with the trading standards complaint in general and then you limit that to only the people in the UK because only the people in the UK can complain to the Trading Standards Authority. So that's a tiny proportion actually of their potential client base. So the number of disappointed clients I would imagine is fairly significant. Um, it's all very interesting and not in a good way. <laughs> The next set of website businesses that we're going to look at deal with um, legal transitions, ironically enough. So these are things like separation agreements, cohabitation agreements, prenup agreements, and there is a simple solution costing just £67 available from uh, a myriad of, of, of different companies using the same model. Very similar web design, so you just get it designed once and just change the pictures and a few titles. Um, the same service, but with different kind of names for it. And um, I'm not sure what legal standing these agreements have. There is a solicitor listed on staff for some of these companies, and I'm assuming that it is because he has his own professional registration that this is legal. Uh, because if you are expected to um, 
consult with a solicitor, they are professionally regulated, which means that there are serious sanctions if they are dishonest with you, if they charge you for things that um, didn't happen, or, or if they fail to inform you of an important point of law. See how this is building up a picture of some quite shady business dealings. So we come on to the, the Thai connection, the offices in Chiang Mai, and um, I do have uh, questions about what, what it is that they are doing there. And uh, the reason why I've got those questions um, relates to one of the companies, which is called UK Digital Solutions. And there are probably other companies that are called similar things that are also um, ultimately owned by the Fields Group. And they offer digital marketing services. So what that means is things like SEO, search engine optimizations. So this is when you contract people to make sure that your website appears higher up in the Google rankings when people do a search for your industry. So that um, to me ties in very nicely with what we previously discussed about the testimonials and the trustworthiness of review sites for the various uh, data recovery uh, operations that are running because it seems to me that the large number of very generous five-star reviews could possibly be a result of search engine optimization for a business, digital market marketing for a business, whereby you employ a bunch of people on a fairly low wage, perhaps in Thailand, and they spend their days uh, creating profiles to add positive reviews for your company. And you can actually charge other companies for that service. So you can charge companies for the service of providing. So we can see that the Chiang Mai branch of Fields Analytics is recruiting, and they're recruiting for sales advisors, speaking the various languages in order to be uh, selling the front end of those different websites in different countries, Italy, Spain, Germany. Uh, so they're advertising for sales advisors to sit on the phones and um, try and get people to buy their services. The other thing that they are advertising for heavily are admin workers and the kind of administrative tasks I would imagine that they're asked to do in those offices are things like creating reviews and leaving um, fake uh, customer reviews on uh, trusted uh, review sites that can influence people's decisions about where which company to go for. And because of their complete market saturation by having all these, this hydra with so many different heads of these different companies, they're all called different things, but all actually the same group of people doing the same service. Um, those uh, positive reviews can very quickly edge out all the competition by just kind of making things appear on top of um, where the opposition's uh, websites might be. So, you know, they've, 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 they know what they're doing. They're making a lot of money doing this. Um, my question is, are these the kind of people with the kind of principles you want to be representatives in Parliament? I'll go on in the next video to discuss how um, concerns that I have over the election of people who make a living from manipulating uh, information online. Thanks for joining me to uh, have a little look at the weasel business practices of the uh, Wallace family Bridgend. Uh, Dr. Daryl Hamilton Wallace and Dr. Jamie Hamilton Wallace both involved up to their necks. You can go on Companies House, you can actually look through all of the same resources that I have looked at to come to your own conclusions. Um, I have spent a fair amount of time on this and the more I uncover, the more there is. There's so much, so much. Um, but you know, great, this guy is the first trans MP and so it's absolutely right that he comes under this level of scrutiny. He's a parliamentary representative for all the people of Bridgend, for goodness sake. So, join me again for another video where we're looking at his uh, political um, ambitions. And uh, until then, take care. I'll see you soon.